Microphone test, one, two, three, four. few times in that my voice has almost failed me. I got a cold if Dwayne Oakerson heard me coughing a few times. I imagine, you know, you can cut out, Don, what uh, applies because there'll be some things that, <coughs> that I'll say that you won't want to, as I understand, you want to tape out the meetings. Well, you know, I feel the greatest load uh, gone off of the shoulders that could possibly be, you know. I just grabbed the ball and tossed it over to you. You got the ball now. And uh, the press, I've had a lot of press calls. I can tell you very simply the statement, of course, that you read, but in addition to it, how many of you remember what I said last August 3rd in Des Moines, Iowa? And I have never over the years said something I didn't mean because I said there August 3rd and I had been asked to say it on the part, the part of others as they had voiced their feelings to me that the system and the structure was ready in the organization. We had the professional backup help. The structure nationwide was there ready and farmers could price their products by March 1st. If they supported the organization and if everybody really worked. I said that if they were not going to, I wanted to know it. I didn't say I, I said we wanted to know it. And if they were not going to, we wanted to go back to our own farms. And I can tell you that that is the only reason that I did what I did. I felt that I, although we made progress, that I was not getting the support necessary to achieve the goals that I feel very deeply that need to be achieved by farmers. And if you had followed my career, if that's what you want to call it, and I never looked upon it as a career because I never intended to be in public life, you would know that what I said I meant, whether it was going to be a holding action or whatever it was going to be. And I hope that those that have supported me so loyally, and if they believed in me, I hope that they will, above everything else, now work harder than ever. That they will see the job done, because the thing that would hurt me the worst would to see it falter now. And those that have been opposed to me, they have no excuse now. So I hope that everybody goes out of here, whatever side they may have been on, which I never could see why there had to be sides, 
that they carry with them that message of my desires. I have only one goal in mind for farmers, and that is that they price their products. The support of farmers rapidly can still price products by the first day of March. The structure is there, it's nationwide, and the professionalism is there to back it up. I could only achieve what farmers' support made it possible for me to achieve. Devon Woodland is in no different position. Nor will anybody else be. But that doesn't mean that we do not have to work and be among the people, giving them leadership, not just telling them how to do it, but be among them, giving them leadership. The people in this room have the knowledge, and you have the ability, but you cannot expect other people to do what you are not willing to do yourself. Nor can the county leaders be in any other position. And if you do not quickly take advantage of what I hope this situation has brought about, and me returning to the farm, then I feel that you will have lost an opportunity, an opportunity that may not again be available to the farmers of this country. Brymar, who is the foremost economist in this country as far as seniority is concerned, has recently predicted that in 12 years the family farm will be gone. That is not my words, it's his. It's time that farmers believe their leaders that are working in their behalf. This is going to take a concentrated and concerted effort I will help Devon Woodland in any way I can. I will be available for him to talk to me by phone or whatever he asks me to do. But I do not believe, nor would I want it if I were in his place, nor do I think it's fair for anybody from this date forward for me to uh, for you to ask me an opinion on what i think about things that might be happening in the organization because my conferences will be only with Devon Woodland because nobody is going to misquote me saying that I said something about this or something about that that would make Devon Woodland's job harder. That is not going to happen. He needs the support. He's capable. Nobody can question his integrity. But what he needs is absolute trust, absolute support, 
and hard work. Just conversation of support will mean nothing. What it takes is actual support. We've never had anything but an idea, a cause, and people to work with. We've never had any money, but we've made it somehow, some way. And in an organization for a cause of people, the money should be spent to promote that cause and to help people. And when there's need for money, the only people that have an investment in that need are the farmers that have products that can benefit from whatever successes the organization has that benefits them. He must have the complete loyalty, complete support, and understanding that somebody has to be boss, you cannot operate by committee or consensus. The organization was set up and structured as our government that has withstood all the tests of executive, legislative, and judicial. The legislative body as a board of directors Devon Woodland is the head of the administrative branch, and the members are the judicial branch of this organization. And those lines must be clearly protected or you'll have chaos. And everybody must understand that they are to do their job, whether it's a member county officers, staff, or whoever it might be. And if they do their job, they don't have to worry about somebody else. And the opportunity that is here is unmatched. And there's one thing that I would stress to all NFO members, leaders, and everybody else. If there's any sign of a political campaign this year, I think it's first the full responsibility of the board of directors to get together and unanimous, unanimously support Devon Woodland. He cannot have distraction, nor can we stand in the press petty charges that are only minute, even though they might be right of a total picture. You've got to have stability in the leadership, because we are now ranked somewhere around 350th of the, or maybe even higher, of the Fortune's 500. And if they tried to carry on their business were that every so often the stockholders got together and voted on who was going to do the executive work, they wouldn't be in the Fortune 500 very long and neither would the NFO. Not only do we have an organization Not only do we have the hope of people, but now we have big business in a sense that must be used for the cause of people. But there has to be some separation 
of that. Sound business on one hand, but matching the cause of people also on the other. The challenge is as great a challenge as there is in this nation. And in this nation, and as the press has asked me many calls the last few hours, some of them have started it off by saying that I've been controversial. My answer to that is, I hope so. <clears throat> Others have said, what do I feel is my greatest accomplishment? That I don't know. But what I'm trying to say is, I hope that I've been controversial because when you make statements as a public leader, I hope that I have fulfilled what I wanted to do, that aspect. That I did not want to quibble. I did not want to be wishy-washy. I wanted the people to know exactly where I stood where the organization stood, and I wanted it clearly stated so that there could be a debate and discussion of the issues and that people knew where we stood and that in the debate there were bound to be those that took sides. But in taking sides, they could take sides because the issues were clearly stated and we stood for what we believed in. An August 3rd meeting, I tried to forewarn the people if I had value, without breaking confidence in the organization, of what my intentions would be. <clears throat> my hope is, and my encouragement is, for the members to rally, get new members. The greatest thing that would hurt me is for the organization not to make great strides. There may be of those that might worry, well, what's going to happen to Ornley Staley? Well, you know, the biggest problem I had last night was a, one of the tracts of land that we rented last year in addition to our own operations for additional pasture. And I wasn't sure that we were going to get it. Son Greg thought he had it tied down, and together we worked on it. And so last night, I found out whether it was sold or whether it wasn't. We already had it tied down. And so that was the only problem I had, and I solved it, you know. <laughs> so the other is, that I have the ability or stupidity, I don't know which it is, that every day is a new day and it's another day with another challenge. My health is great, I feel good. And I intend to be busy on that farm. It's the fourth generation on that farm. 
I live in the house I was born in. I always have loved cattle. I fed my first calf when I was nine, rented the first farm when I, I was 14 or 12. And that's neither here nor there. But that's been my greatest relaxation over the years when I went down to the farm and physical work. I'll tell a little story though, and this is a true story and I don't want to misinterpret it. Bill Thatcher, who was the head of GTA, who some of you have heard and known, was in the Washington office of GTA years ago. And they were approaching a convention. And he had some accounting experience. And so they wanted him to come out and help audit some elevators. And he came out from the Washington office. But instead of auditing the elevators, he organized the elevators to go into the convention and put him in at the head of it. His auditing was pretty poor, but his politics under the circumstance was pretty good. So what happened was that later the great speaker that he got to be he was making a speech and he said, we've got to give our blood if necessary for GTA. And the old boy that got double crossed was sitting on the front row. And he looked up and he said, Bill, what do I do? I gave mine once. <laughs> well, the only thing that I've got to say in no relation other than this, There have been people through this country that thought that I wanted to be president of the NFO for the, the glory, the power, and I don't know what all. And I watched very carefully, working very hard, nine, ten meetings a week before Christmas with the young farmers. Lloyd Rolfing knows how sick I was with the flu. And I was thinking all the time and trying to muster all the support. That could somebody else get more support than I'm getting? That was running through my mind as occasionally there, Lloyd. And it's arrived the time of winter right now that if we're going to give it a try, really, farmers, and they can do it by March 1st, we can't wait around wondering what could be done. So I say, for whatever I have contributed, for whatever help I gave people, the one thing that I ask for is that now they put their shoulders to the wheel and give the leadership unqualified support and everybody works as a, as a team. A team of determination with their eyes on the goals, with statesmanlike approaches, but the underlying determination that together the goals of justice for the farmers of this country can be achieved. It never has been. The structure's there. 
what this organization needs is the support and leadership of many. I want to say to everybody, thanks for the help. I've appreciated it, and my shoulders are mighty light with the load on them now. Thank you. God bless you. I certainly don't want to detract from anything that Orrin Lee has said. I don't think there's a man that ever walked that has touched the lives of more people than he has. I don't think that there has ever been a smoother transition of leadership in any organization. Not only between he and I, but between the department directors and the staff that they have. Now, I just want to assure you as the directors and the members out in the country that the goal of this organization has not changed, being that someday we will price our product. The ultimate goal, the time frame that we are operating in would indicate to us that we have to involve ourselves immediately to reach that goal. The continuity, the stability of the programs will be unmarred by this transition. And I plead with the members of this organization to do what they know has to be done. We can give the leadership, the coordination, but they must decide in their minds, and the decision will be made by them, whether we succeed or fail. I'm confident in my mind that we have got every reason to believe that victory is attainable. If I didn't believe that, I wouldn't go to the slaughter like a lamb. I'd bow out. But I believe it can be done. It isn't going to be done by a few of us doing it. And the job is not large, but it's a bunch of people, masses each doing a little bit. And if you will assure me that this is what you will do, I'll assure you I'll do my part. I think our work's cut out for us. We know what has to be done. And you directors, as you go back to your states and to your areas, and you talk to your people, I encourage them to believe you as they have never believed you before. Thank you.